Hey guys, Jessica here at the Furry Family Coach and we are returning to our beginner dog training series. So our last video was on the recall or having your dog come to you when you call them. And I wanted to expand upon that just a little bit because I know there's a lot of troubleshooting that kind of needs to happen really no matter what you're training with your dog because once we increase difficulty once we add distractions and in and change up environments for our dog things change right our dog doesn't necessarily understand that we want the same things for them because there's a lot more going on in their environment so i wanted to continue by talking about what we do especially in this situation i find more people have trouble with the recall when moving outside than anything else they're training so I wanted to include this with the recall video, but this is true of anything you're training. So I wanted to go through kind of some troubleshooting things. If you're having issues transitioning outside specifically, but really anytime you're increasing the difficulty with a cue, you are teaching your dog. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Okay, so really quickly, just some housekeeping items before we get going into the video. Again, my name is Jessica. I am the furry family coach. I am a positive reinforcement dog trainer and pet parent coach. And this channel is all about positive reinforcement, dog training, canine nutrition, canine enrichment, dog behavior, if any of that is up your alley. Also, I do kind of throw in some cat stuff here and there because I am a pet parent coach and I do have cats after all. So go ahead and click that subscribe button if it's red. Look down there. If the subscribe button is red, click it and turn it gray. Then a bell will appear next to it. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, two more things I want you to do. Click that like button and comment down below. You can do this now. You can do this at the end of the video, whatever is easier for you. I want to know what's going on with you and your dog, why you clicked on this video and what you get from this video. Let me know what's going on with you. Um, and I will also tell you at the end of the video, a couple other ways to get additional resources and help for training your dog. So make sure you stick in till the end. Also, uh, really quickly, this is part of the beginner dog training series. So uh, if you have not started from the beginning of the beginner dog training series, there is a link in the description to the playlist. I highly recommend you start from the beginning and watch all the way through working with your dog as you go along because I did put these videos in a specific order for a reason. These are, these are the order in which I want you to work with your dog. You will see why as we go along. So definitely check the description for the link to the playlist and start from the beginning. Okay, so like I said, we are specifically continuing with the recall or coming when called cue with our dog and transitioning outside. But but again, this, these tips in this video are going to help you get through and get over any other hurdles you may be working with with your dog and any other training cue you have going on. What I really want you to remember, this is the key, this is the, the whole point of this video, this right here, so listen really, really, really quickly, get, get in here with me. Remember that anytime you change up the environment for your dog, whether that's moving from your bedroom to your living room or to your kitchen, to your backyard, to your front yard, to, your, to the park, to your friend's house, whatever it may be, anytime you are changing up the environment for your dog, they may be thrown off their game. So they may not understand, they're not necessarily, not all dogs, maybe a small percentage of dogs, especially a dog that you've been working with for a long period of time, the more you work with them in different environments, the more they're going to understand that you want the same thing from them, you want the same behaviors out of them, regardless of their environment. But especially when you're first starting out, your dog is not going to understand that different environments equate to the same behavior. They, we have to train this. We have to teach this to them. So they're going to be thrown off their game. You're not necessarily going to be able to move from exactly where you are working with your dog inside of your home. That's not going to transition outside of your home or to any other environment super easily for your dog. We have to work up to it. So anytime we move outside, let's, let's go with outside as 
the big instance in this particular video because there are a million different ways um, and counting, I'm sure, that the environment can be changed up for your dog. But let's specifically, because this is where people ha tend to have the most difficulty and the most frustration, is they've been training inside and they're trying to move outside and this is where things fall apart for most people. And that's totally understandable. We are adding so many distractions on top of changing up the environment, right? So for your dog, in your dog's mindset, in their in your home, in their home, there's there's a set of rules and they follow those rules. And when they leave the home, all bets are off, right? Like those rules in your dog's mind, those rules don't necessarily apply. Uh, it's, it's, it's a whole new world. We are no longer in our safe little bubble. So there are other dogs out here. There are squirrels out here. There are kids and children running around and playing out here. There are other adults. There are cars. There are buses. There are loud noises. Why, in your dog's mind, would the same rules apply from inside of your safe little bubble of your home to the outside world, right? We have to let them know and train through experience that the same rules apply outside as inside because even though they're no longer in the safe little bubble of our home, they are with us on lead and we are the extension of that safe little bubble of home for them. So we expect the same behaviors. And this doesn't come naturally to dogs. This is um, this doesn't come naturally to a lot of people, let me just say, but this definitely doesn't come naturally to dogs. We have to continue to use positive reinforcement to show them that the behaviors that we have been training with them inside of the house are still applicable outside of the house. And how do we do that? So we start off by testing our dog's threshold for learning. And I've talked a lot about threshold in a couple of the other videos in the beginner dog training series. So threshold is that point, and this applies to anybody, but we're just talking about our dogs specifically. A threshold is a point at which your dog, their behavior starts to change. So if we're talking about um, attention, right? Maybe them paying attention to you. Specifically in this situation, they're learning something. So they need to be paying attention to us. They need to be paying attention to, to me, to you, as the person that they should be looking to, to figure out what they need to be doing next. When does, when does your dog get to the point where they no longer can pay attention to me, right? They no longer can pay attention to you. So, the way we do this is with a reward. We take our treats with us and we ask them periodically, maybe as we're stepping through the door and as we start walking into the front yard, periodically we take a break, we, we stop walking, right? We ask them for a look or a sit, something really easy that your dog can do. If your dog can pay attention to you to do that cue, whatever it may be, a sit or a look, reward it, wonderful. Let's take a few more steps and see if we can still get that same behavior from our dog when we ask them for that cue. At that point where they can no longer pay attention to us, there are too many things going on around them and they're looking and they're looking and they're, oh my gosh, there's something over here and there's something over here and they can't pay attention to you and they're not taking a treat from you. If, if you can put a treat in front of their nose and they are not going to take it from you, they, are, they have reached their threshold. They can no longer pay attention to you. There are too, they can't even pay attention to a yummy treat in your hand. There are too many things in the world that are distracting them. And this is how we're going to gauge where we need to start working with our dog. Maybe you can walk through the door and take three steps and your dog is all good. You take that fourth step and you're getting closer to the street, you're getting closer to the world and there are all these things going on and they can no longer pay attention to you. We need to go back to that third step and we need to, or you know, three steps out the door and we need to start working our way up to that fourth step, 
And we do this by continuing to ask for different behaviors from our dog, whether that's a sit, whether that's a stay, whether that's some other uh, trick that you may have taught your dog, shake hands and reward it. And we, we, we're gonna take that fourth step. We're gonna take a baby step and we're gonna continue to ask your dog for things, a sit, a stay, a look, a uh, shake, whatever it may be that you have been working with with your dog and we're gonna reward it. And we're gonna to continue to do that just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit more each day. I, again, I don't recommend spending more than about 10 or 15 minutes in a single training session with your dog. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. You get mentally drained. Your dog gets mentally drained. After about 10 or 15 minutes, neither one of you are learning. Or you, know, you may get frustrated. Your dog may not be learning anymore. So do this 10 or 15 minutes a couple of times a day and we're gonna gradually get to the point where we can maintain our dog's attention outside and we can continue to ask them for things. If you are not able to keep your dog uh, keep your dog's attention and you are outside, remember to have your dog on a leash and if you are trying to work on a recall or a come when called cue, have a long line with you. I, I talked about the long line in the recall video before this. I will, I will remember to put the link to that long line in the description below. They are super inexpensive and worth their weight in gold. You absolutely need to have one if you are training anything with your dog outdoors. Here's the other thing I want you to do. A lot of times when we move into a new environment with our dogs, let's say we're going outside. Let's continue with going outside. Your dog needs to be able to assess the situation that they are in and become comfortable with it. So another thing I want you to do is and keep your dog on leash, keep your dog on a long line if you're working in a, a large open area. Give your dog 15, 20, 25 minutes, however long it really needs to take and go around and just explore with your dog. Have some downtime. Let your dog explore the area and become comfortable in that area. This can also help immensely to be able to gain your dog's attention. So if you try, if you go, say you go to the park and you're unable to get your dog's attention as soon as you get there, you try to give them a treat and they can't pay any attention to it. They are not gonna take that treat out of your hand. They are too focused on too many other things. They're, they're, they can't even be concerned with the treat you have in your hand. Let's walk around and let your dog explore 15, 20 minutes. Let's have some downtime and just enjoy nature, enjoy the outdoors, let your dog get some enrichment in, explore the environment, say, okay, I understand what this is now, I know where we are, I'm comfortable, now try again and see if your dog will take that treat from you. Then you know your dog has done what they need to do to become comfortable in their environment and you now have the power of attention with your dog. So those are the two things I really want you to work on with your dog anytime you transition to a new environment at all. Specifically, we were talking about going outside in this video, but it really can be any new environment, maybe a friend's house that you're going to um, to train. Let them, let them browse around and become comfortable with their environment and then get their attention. Use that treat. That's going to be, for me, that's the best way to find out if your dog is in a, uh, their, their brain is in a position where they are able to pay attention to you and learn anything is if you can give them a treat and they are willing to accept it. That's a good indicator that your dog is in a position that they are comfortable enough to learn. So, um, those are the two main things that we can do to get your dog into a position if they are currently in a position where they are unable to learn to get them into a position where they are able to learn. I just want to give you a reminder that if your dog is not able to comply with anything that you are doing, don't get angry. It is not going to help the situation. Regardless of the cue you're training, but specifically in this video, we are talking about recall or coming when called. You want to, your dog to know and be 100% confident in the fact that coming to you always results in a positive response. So getting angry is going to undermine any training that you have already done with your dog. So let's make sure to keep ourselves in a mental state where we understand that it is not going to do anything but harm if we get angry. Let's not get angry, understand what's going on in the situation, and have a plan to move forward. 
Remember that if your dog looks forward to coming to you because they're getting positive reinforcement when they do, they are so much more likely to come to you when you call them. So again, like I said, this applies with any cue you are training, but I specifically included it for the recall or coming when called because this is where people tend to slip up the most and don't know how to move forward. And I wanted to make sure that I got you this information specifically with this particular cue because this is such an important cue to train your dog with. If this video helps you or if you have anybody else who may need this video to help them with their dog, make sure to share it with them. Give this video a thumbs up and again, if you you are new to the beginner dog training series there is a link in the description below I highly recommend you click the link to the playlist start from the beginning and work with your dog all the way through the playlist uh, again I'm Jessica the Freddy family coach thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube I really appreciate each and every one of you give this video a thumbs up and if that subscribe button right down there is red make sure you click it turn it gray when you do a bell will appear click the bell select all notifications that way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video oh really quickly I told you at the end of the video I was going to let you know how to get more information and more resources first of all there is a link in the description to join the family this link is going to take you to the group there are thousands of other pet parents as well as myself in this group waiting for you to join. What, what? Why do you want to join? You want to join because there are thousands of other pet parents just like you there. We can share the wins, ask questions if you're getting hung up on something, if you're frustrated and you just don't know what to do, you need suggestions for something about your pets, post in the group. We are all here waiting to help you. Also, there is another link in the description to grab my book. In this book, it's the seven miracle steps. This is the foundation of training. Everything I teach to all of my in-home clients is the first thing we go over before we go over anything else. So many times with so many people and their dogs, just putting these seven canine commandments or what I call the seven miracle steps in this book, putting these in place in your home dramatically change the relationship between you and your dog. I have had so many people send me so many wonderful testimonials just after putting these canine commandments in place in their home. I would highly recommend that you start out with that book. You can get a digital copy right now, get it on your phone, or your tablet, your computer, read it in a couple of hours, and you and your dog are off to the races. There are also a couple of other links in the description. One of them specifically to my online video training course. I highly recommend you check that out if you need any specialized help with your dog. And of course, the beginner dog training series right here on YouTube. The link to the playlist is in the description. Also, there is gonna be another video popping up right about here. I highly recommend you watch that video next. It is definitely going to help you build that bond with your dog. And I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.